Ladies and gentlemen, thank you this afternoon for coming to this session. Robin, um, I have met through being on the Joomla Day USA team, and um, and I really appreciate all she's done because you know it's been a big help uh, in light of my stuff going on outside of the uh, outside of the event. Few pieces of housekeeping. I, if you, you know, I, I'm going to repeat some stuff you've already heard. Number one, we have the Q and A. If you have questions, post them there. I will do my best to get them to Robin, and we will answer them. Polls? Well, I don't have a poll. I don't have a poll. You have a poll. Okay. So, no, I don't. No, I don't have one. Okay. Well, then, hey, it's all right. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, particularly our gold sponsor, Watchful, and all of the other sponsors some of you are in this room and um that's kind of a big deal that you are that active in the community it's really so nice and i genuinely appreciate the support of this event um i'm speaking for myself but i'm sure i can say for some of the others on the team um I don't have much else to say. I think that you guys have been to this rodeo a few times today. And so with that, I'm going to get out of the way and let Robin um, do her thing. So um, thank you and welcome. All right. So let's get started. Um, an accessibility discussion for designing and coding websites. And my name is Robin Clapp. And let me start by saying this is a discussion because I am by no means an expert in accessibility. In fact, this presentation actually covers the discoveries I've made over the last year uh, during my educational journey. I literally kept a journal of each new piece of the puzzle and that puzzle is far from finished, but I believe there's only one place to start. So I have started at the beginning. All right. On the screen, I have my contact information, which is also on the last slide of the presentation. More interestingly is a picture of me, which most of you can see. But the more we learn about accessibility, we realize not everyone can see it. So I have an alt tag here that I'm going to read. Robin Clapp, a middle-aged white woman with long, messy blonde hair, squinting at the sun as she is getting her picture taken on the grounds of Rutgers University in New Jersey, holding two thumbs up after passing her Joomla 3.x certification test. That's me. And I'm super excited to be here today as well because I'm what I call a Joomla purist. For better or worse, I started designing and coding websites in Joomla 1.0, and that was in 2006. And I have been designing websites exclusively in Joomla ever since. I have been working from home for the last 15 years designing websites while raising my twin boys, Trevor and Dan. And prior to that, I worked for General Dynamics as a hardware firmware engineer straight out of, a, straight out of college. And that was for 13 years. I have a computer engineering degree. So this is my second career and I owe much of my success to the Joomla platform and all the wonderful people around the world that make it what it is today. And I am so glad to see so many of you here at JDay USA. All right, so I left that corporate job for these two, my twin boys, Trevor and Dan. I found something I could do from home for work and at the same, same time could walk them to the bus stop every day and enjoy some time off during the summer. I started web design by Robin when they were four years old and they are now 19 years old and off at college. Now let me tell you a little bit about what I've learned in the last uh, 12 plus months about designing accessible websites. The power of the web is in its universality. Access by everyone, regardless of disability, is the essential aspect. And this is a direct quote from Tim Berners-Lee, inventor of the World Wide Web. Think about that for a moment. It was always meant to be this way, even from the beginning. 
I tell people all the time that I'm learning to make websites accessible. And the first question they ask me is, what is, what is accessibility? So let's start with an explanation. Web accessibility means that people can use the web, people of all abilities. More specifically, they can perceive, understand, navigate, interact, and they can contribute to the web. All right. So what are some of the ways, the untraditional ways that people are interacting with their web? So if they're not on a mouse, how are they on the web? Many are using a keyboard and they're tabbing through the website, going to the next link, going to the next form item and button. They're using enter or spacebar to activate keys. And there's all kinds of other functions um, based on different tools and, and different functions that they need to do. Okay. Other assistive technology examples include switch controls or screen readers or closed caption and subtitles, voice recognition, pinch zoom on our phones. But we're not here today to learn how to use assistive technology. Those that, that rely on them every day are really good at it. We are here to learn how to make our websites work with assistive technology and therefore lessen the barrier for those that use them. So who are these people um, that are using these assistive technology? For keyboards and switch controls, they offer an alternative for those with limited or no upper body movement. Screen readers can assist the blind and those with visual disabilities. Closed caption, subtitles, transcripts, they assist the deaf and hard of hearing. And that's just a short list. One thing worth mentioning, mentioning is that Many of us benefit from assistive technology in our daily lives, whether due to a temporary disability or out of convenience. Accessible websites are the way of the future and there's really no other reason to believe otherwise. All right, I have been using my own website, which is pictured here as a testing ground for all of my exploratory learning over the last year. And one thing I've heard over and over again is that accessible websites are ugly, that they're boring and they lack style, okay? I 100% disagree, and I'd like to start a new trend and say accessibility can be beautiful and helping 25% more of the population access much needed information, much needed online information at the same time is definitely a beautiful thing. There are five design practices to keep in mind when designing for accessibility. The first one, simple design and navigation. And why is that? Because complex navigation and complex page layouts can be difficult for everyone to understand. Number two is the flexible design. So all of those controls that browsers provide to make fonts larger so you can see them, to change colors of the font, colors of the background, increase spacing and adjust margins. You wanna make sure that your design does not break when people make these adjustments. So you gotta make sure that your design is flexible. The third one is clear use of words. Let's face it, leave your complex sentences for your thesis, right? Leave unusual words, slang, and metaphors for your creative writing. Business websites or websites that serve a practical purpose need to be useful first and foremost. And how do we do that? Make good use of structure. HTML provides that structure. Let's use it. Headings, paragraphs, lists. You get the idea. Number four is clean and concise use of images, which includes using your alt tags properly. And we're gonna go into more detail later. And number five, limit the use of movement or animation and definitely give people the option to stop, pause, or mute any kind of noise. Web content accessibility guidelines. 
otherwise referred to as the WCAG, defines requirements on how to make the web content such as text, images, multimedia, structure and presentations accessible. I do have a link here to the standards. Um, and I also have a link to another document that says who and where it applies. Website accessibility is achieved through two coding languages, HTML and CSS. And I'm pretty good at HTML and CSS. So that means to me that I have the power to make websites accessible. So why shouldn't I? So what is CSS? If I were to give you the analogy of a house, HTML is the foundation, the walls, the roof, the doors, the windows. CSS is how you decorate it. It stands for cascading style sheets. It is the coding language that tells a device such as a computer browser, a phone, a tablet, how to present the look and style of a website. This includes the design layout of the web page using colors, your fonts that you're picking, your, your button styles, your link styles, et cetera. So how does CSS improve your website accessibility? Let's start with color contrast. Color contrast is calculated based on the color and the size of the text placed on a background color. So there's a minimum requirement defined in your WCAG, but you don't have to worry. You don't need to do complicated math. There is a, there's plenty of free online tools that will do automated tests and tell you whether you've met that minimum requirement or not. And I'll share those tools with you later in the presentation. But just to illustrate, I have two buttons to compare. It's the send message button. I'd really prefer you use the one on the left, and why is that? because you can actually see it. Now we all love the color green, but there is a fine line between beauty and just plain impossible to see. And so therefore the one on the right is pretty much useless. My next example deals with, sp with spacing. Designers already ha should have a love affair with white space, but for accessibility, it is for practical reasons. For someone with limited hand, control or shaky hands, finding the right spot to click on a mouse or to press on a touch screen is more achievable with adequate spacing. In this example, you kind of, you know how those menus come across without any CSS. Add a little CSS on the right, you added some padding, you have some contrast, all of a sudden the, the chances of successfully picking the right menu item has increased tremendously. And again, you don't have to worry about calculating whether or not you've met the spacing. Use those online tools and they will tell you. And you can go ahead, go ahead and, and fix the padding until you get um, the right spacing that passes. All right, back to what is HTML, using the analogy of the house. Except now we're talking about the language declaration, the title, the heading tags, paragraphs, links, lists, images, buttons, forms. If you remember one thing in this presentation today, please remember this. Use your HTML building blocks as they were intended. Understand their role and use them as they were meant to be used. The very first tag you should set is a language tag, and it can be done in the Joomla system language code. A standard install, com when I install it, comes with uh, Great Britain English. Go ahead and change that to US English if you're a US-based website. Screen readers have come a long way and they can read text aloud using appropriate accents actually and pronunciation. And not that a British accent isn't really cool, but for professional business websites, let's select the right language variation. For those who rely on dictionaries or grammar checkers to overcome cognitive and learning disabilities, it's important that you've selected the right language so it brings up the right dictionary. So you see there's other reasons for that language de declaration that you might not have thought of. 
Web, webs, uh, web page titles should reflect the content and purpose of a page. They become especially important when you have multiple tabs open, right? If you're using a screen reader to navigate between tabs, you're trying to get back to the web page you, you, wanted, you were on before, but you're finding that all of the titles are titled home, right? Home, home, home. So you didn't really, you know, you can't get back to the one that you were at before. This can be very frustrating for, for blind users. So you wanna make sure that you make that title tag exactly what the page is. In Joomla, the title tags are assigned in the menu items, in the page display tab, in the browser page title input box. And one thing that I wanna mention is that Google rewards accessibility. And therefore you will find that many of these things that make your website more accessible also help with your Google search ranking. So don't go keyword stuffing into titles. Keep in mind, um, keep accessibility in mind and you'll be far better off. Heading tags. They were created for a reason, use them. There should only ever be one H1 heading tag on your page and this is your main topic and the opening of your page content. After that, you will find all kinds of interesting information for sure. But that information should be organized in an easy to understand way. And to make it easier to understand, use your subheadings to organize the information into subtopics. Those are your H2s, your H3s. As I mentioned before, assistive technology can jump from heading to heading. This allows people to browse each section. They find the section they're interested in and then they read the paragraphs below it. But imagine if all of your content was just all paragraphs and you went ahead and you bolded you know, your, your subtopics instead of using an H2, you just made paragraphs a bold. So a screen reader has to read every word on the page in order to get to the section that they wanted to learn about. Again, this is just frustrating for anyone using assistive technology and you really could make a difference by making a switch in how you structure the content on your pages. One last thing I wanna mention for this topic is to use your skip to content link. And I'm so excited that it's gonna be automatically incorporated in Joomla 4 that I found out today in the other accessibility um, session. That skip to content link is the first link someone should um, encounter when they hit the tab button on their keyboard. It's that first link and it allows you to skip across all of the, the lengthy menus and go right to the content. And I've created it very easily by um, creating an anchor link at the top of every page. And I have put an ID for all of my H1s and I just called that ID H1. And so now on every page, if they encounter that skip to content link, it goes right to the beginning of your content. Done, success, right? Back in October of 1990, Tim Berners-Lee had written three fundamental technologies that are the foundation of the web today, HTML, URLs, and HTTP. Up until then, computers had data individually stored on them, and that's where it stayed. Why do I bring this up? Because it really shows the power of links. Links, brings, links bring you from one great piece of information to the next. And it's why information on one part of the world can so easily be shared with the rest of the world. Well, everyone deserves this information, no matter the tools they're using. So let's do our best to make our information accessible through useful link text. Stop using click here or read more as it gives no indication of where it will bring you and for what purpose. All right, I think I may have skipped the last slide, but we'll just move on. Um, one note um, here, I have an example um, of three different um, modules and they have H2 tags. They're called classes, museum, and events. The sentence below is in a paragraph 
And the link below that is actually colored blue and I've styled the uppercase by my CSS code. So um, tell the website, this tells the website precisely where they're gonna be going and for what purpose. To find a class, to visit a museum or to browse an event. One thing to know is when it comes to links is that title at attributes are only created when you hover over the link. This hover information is only accessible with a mouse hover. And therefore you can't get to it if you're using your keyboard and, and therefore it's not accessible for everybody. And a good rule to follow with accessibility is only use it if everyone can get access to it. And I'll actually just jump back because I didn't talk about paragraphs and lists. Um, but basically, um, use your paragraphs for, for um, you know, use the P tag when you do paragraphs. You can also use lists instead of long, complicated paragraphs to break down information so that they're um, more easily comprehended. And here, this, here's a bulleted list of just some um, good practices. Don't underline text, that's not a link. Avoid all caps unless it's an acronym because it's gonna read all those capitalized letters one by one. Um, it doesn't mean you can't use all caps. Um, you can certainly do it for style purposes. So you type it in regular case and then you do the text transform uppercase in your CSS. And um, be careful of ASCII characters. Um, just make sure you go ahead and try your screen readers to see what it says. Um, and whether or not that really makes sense. In this case, 16 to 17 um, comes out on a screen reader a lot easier. And I apologize for jumping ahead on that. Okay. Images must have text alternatives, otherwise referred to as alt tags. And whether populated or empty, a screen reader will read the alt tag, allowing the image to be experienced when it would other not, otherwise not be. And there are three reasons for using images on a web page, And this is how you should utilize the alt tag. The first one is informative images should have alt tags that convey the essential information presented by the images. This could be someone's headshot or a beautiful garden. It could be a pie chart or a map. The alt tag should tell you the story behind the image and why it was important enough to be included on this web page. Functional image, images, for example, use, um, used as links or buttons should have alt tags that tell what function um, will be activated when you, when you use it. Will it submit a form? Will it send an email? Will it link to a new browser window? Will it link to another page on the same website? This is especially important for blind users as they cannot see the transaction and they need to be prepared for what might happen ahead beforehand. And third, decorative images should have an empty alt tag so that screen readers skip over it entirely. All right, during my educational journey, I was introduced to a program called Alt Tag as Poetry based out of Boston. And um, they had these free webinars and I totally, um, encourage you to check them out sometime. But basically the blind community wants you to stop using those boring alt tags and give them something poetic. That's the idea behind the movement. So I wanna take a little break right now in our presentation. And what I'm going to do is ask you to shut your eyes and I'm going to read this alt tag to you. And I want you to use your mind's eye to envision what this image is gonna look like. And then when I tell you to, I'm gonna have you open your eyes, I'm gonna show you what the picture is and show you the, the power of alt tags. So if everybody's ready um, and don't fall asleep, but close your eyes and I'm gonna go ahead and read this. Teenaged boy with red curly hair and slightly sunburnt face, wearing a blue and purple check button up dress shirt, laughing with his mouth wide open and his head back showing a full set of teeth and his nose scrunched and his eyes shut. All right, go ahead and open your eyes and this is what you can see. All right. 
Awesome. This is my son, Dan, and we were at the beach in Maine on vacation taking photos um, for a senior picture. He did not pick this one for the yearbook, but it was by far my favorite. And it doesn't really matter if the image in your head matches this one. What matters is that you've experienced the photo when you wouldn't have otherwise been able to um, if there wasn't an alt tag. And that is why alt text is so important. All right, HTML forms and inputs. I believe they're the most incorrectly coded HTML element. I don't know if it's because style was chosen over function, but so many of our components fail to connect the label to the input properly. Um, the example on the left, they use like a default value with no label. So if, if a um, user was using the keyboard and just tabbing from input to input, when it came to, to read what should be put in the input, it's empty. So they don't know what to put in um, the form and therefore they can't fill out the form. So on the right, even though it may not look as pretty, it's actually <laughs> more useful um, for all, you know, the full part of the population. And so by having that input uh, filled out, now when they tab into that, tab into that box, it will say, you know, email, and now they know what to enter. It's really just the small changes that make a huge impact. All right, so once you've um, gone through the whole process of making your website accessible, you're gonna wanna add an accessibility statement. It tells you, it, it tells why you made the commitment. It includes standards that you've referenced, what browsers tool and tools that you've tested your website on. Remember, it's not about being perfect, it's about overcoming the barriers. If you know that your website works well in Chrome, using the Chrome screen reader extension, state that in your accessibility statement. And then there's a link here um, that would help you get started on your statements, kind of an outlining tool that is um, generated and provided by W3C. All right. Here's some really cool accessibility tools. Obviously, I don't have all of them listed here, and this is a very short list. Um, but I'm also going to bring up some Loom videos that I've made kind of using them. Um, the first one is a color contrast tool, and it's really cool because it tells it will show you um, how others with certain um, vision inflictions see your colors on your sites. Um, but the most important part about this tool is if you're a designer, before you ever build the website, you can test to see if that combination will work for contrast. Um, the second one is a wave browser extension for Chrome and Firefox. It's like a click button. Tell me where there's automatic errors on my site for accessibility. The third one is Accessibility Insights for Chrome and Edge, and is by far the most comprehensive one. And the best thing about this tool is it has a test and they match it up to where the standard writes about it. Some of them are automated, some of them are manual, but it tells you right there how to run the test. And that is invaluable to learning how to understand very boring standards, right? And the last one is um, I just, you know, practice with my Chrome box to see if I'm tabbing through my website exactly what the screen reader is saying and whether or not that makes sense because it's all about comprehension. All right, so I'm going to do an accessibility insights test. This is just a video that I'm going to run. And this is this one test is about um, tab when you're tabbing through a website, making sure that there are no traps. And traps means like an infinite loop that it just gets stuck in and it can't get out of. All right. I'm just running this and you're, you're seeing what I pre recorded, but I, here I am. I'm just, I clicked on the extension and I said, oh, I want to do a tab stop test. And then I'm hitting my tab button and you'll just see where it goes from link to link. And what you want is to complete all the links and be able to get back to the beginning again. And then you know that there are no traps. And so it's just one of the cool tools that you can do with uh, free accessibility insights. There you go. And this is the um, who can use color contrasting that I provide to my designers ahead of time. Um, and it, it allows you to, um, 
pick the color of your font, the size of your font, um, the color of your background, switch back and forth. And it also tells you whether you're passing for all of the different, um, it, it automatically generates your con your contrasting ratio. And there's a minimum for WCAG, so you, you can see whether you meet the minimum, but it's really cool how it shows you what it looks like um, to people with cataracts, for instance, or any of the other um, vision conditions that, that people have. That's really cool. So I definitely think you should check that one out. Um, here's the Wave browser. I intentionally have some errors on this page. So I'll just show you this video. This is my sitemap page. And boom, 45 contrast errors um, because that blue is just too light and, it, and, the, and the font is too small on that white background. So I can go in and see, oh, it's a, it's a very low contrast error. I can find where it is in my code and I can track down and now I, I know. So now I can go into my CSS, make adjustments and try to get that fixed. And then I can just run the test again. Um, and here's um, using a screen reader to move around my site. Site map, visited link, navigation, navigation list with pricing, link list item. Main, does your small business need a website that is custom, responsive, content manageable, and secure? Adding one. More about Robin link. Dollar sign, what's the cost? Heading to. We value your time, and for this reason, we list all our prices on our website. We believe in trend. View price list. View pr web design services. Link collection with main website design essentials at an affordable price. Heading one. I'm not very good heading two. at tabbing through Custom website design heading to but that's not responsive good. website design. All right. I'm not very good tabbing through. Um, but like I said, people who rely on them every day probably fly through that. And, and that's not really the point for today. But you just want to make sure um, that you're giving them all the structure they need to get to the information that they um, want to get to. All right, so um, I did two things after I completed the W3C intro to accessibility course. Um, I joined a, an accessibility meetup. I went on meetup.com and I found one in Boston. Um, fantastic wealth of information, probably the best thing I ever did because half the people who show up work in accessibility like myself, the other half rely on accessibility in their daily lives. What a great marriage that is and the conversations that come out of this monthly meetup are tremendous. The uh, knowledge that is shared is unbelievable. Um, the other thing is I learned they pointed me to the Slack channel for Ali Slack. Ali um, stands for accessibility because it's a very long word and it starts with an A, ends with a Y, and it has 11 letters in between in case you didn't know what Ali stood for. Um, and when you get stuck, and the wave tool just said that your contact form is failing and it's because your radio buttons are not properly uh, formatted and you can't figure out why and you've gone on Google and you, you've found 12 different answers, just give up and go to Slack and ask that group. It is probably one of the biggest Slack groups. Um, thousands of people are on there and they're all super knowledgeable and they answered my question within the hour and I was back to coding websites again. All right. And when I started this over a year ago, I because I only design in Joomla, I wanted to learn how to design accessible websites and in Joomla specifically. Um, so I had some goals. I, I wanted a, a menu that was uh, WCAG um, compliant. I did find that the, G, the DJ Mega menu um, is compliant out of the box. So I, I use that one now instead of ones I've used before. Um, the mobile menu and the desktop menu, perfect, good to go. Um, I did find that contact forms were absolutely hard to find one that actually worked. I've been using convert forms. 
um, which for the most part is accessible ex with a few modifications. The radio buttons needed the legend. So um, I was able to get some help from them and made the changes. And now I've got a working contact form for accessibility. Um, finding a rotating banner or an image that had a stop and pause button. DJ Slider has one, a lot of them don't. Um, and I'd be very much interested in, in asking all of you what you're trying to accomplish with accessibility and do you still have um, hurdles to, to overcome in order to get that website further and further to being accessible. Um, I did start a LinkedIn group a while back um, for the Joomla community worldwide. Those people who are interested in accessibility hasn't been very active. I was kind of disappointed in that, but maybe after this conference, we can pick it up and, and make, um, make some more um, waves to get it all done. So that's the LinkedIn group. Um, if you want to look, look it up, it's called Website Accessibility Knowledge and Experiences, Experiences Using the Joomla Platform Worldwide. All right, and that's my dark sky. So I think I'm Got plenty of time for questions and I haven't looked in the chat or the questions the whole time. I just ran through this. But Todd, if you wanna come on the stage um, and tell me what you've been seeing in the chatter. We got a few. We got right. a few. We got lots of good stuff in the chat. Um, and I've got some good questions that I wanted to roll through with you. Um, first of all, the WCAG um, is compliance to the WCAG a moving target. Um, so compliance is a interesting um, topic because I'm in the U.S. We really don't have um, any laws saying that we have to meet the WCAG. Although um, if you're in a municipality or you're in government, you have to. And um, there's different versions of the WCAG. So I think in the U.S. it's like 2.0. And then there's the other variation that says, California just passed it and, and now Virginia is passing it. And if you have clients that um, that are on your website from California and Virginia, therefore you have to. Um, and then there's other variations of the WCAG in different parts of the world. Is it a moving target? Probably. Um, I would hope that it would be version controlled. It is version controlled. Um, but I think the the most important thing to take from this presentation is that we're uh, the accessibility you know the people that rely on accessibility just want you to make their web make those websites accessible to them they're not trying to sue you to make money they're just trying to get awareness and they're just trying to get what everyone else has and that's access to really great information and tools that are provided online i hope that answered your question yeah all right, um, another one. Um, I think this one's been partially answered based on the slide deck you um, showed about developers getting a screen reader or other tools to test their website. I think you showed a pretty good range of tools. And here's the thing that I love that it has changed over the last decade, more free tools. Yeah. Because I remember the cost of a copy of JAWS being quite prohibitive. Mm -hmm. for the average person. And I don't know how somebody that needs that tool can afford that tool or could back in the day. And now there's it's baked into the browser if you want it. Yeah, so, so obviously um, people have their favorite tools, but the most important thing is if you've tested it, say with a free tool, put it in your accessibility statement and therefore they can still get onto your site and they can still use it using it through the free tools if they absolutely, if, if for some reason it does not work with JAWS. Um, what you got to just make sure you do is you're giving them an option that works. Okay. Um, there was a question about CSS. Uh, when you use CSS to hide the label for an input, uh, on a, I'm assuming that's on a form, a uh, screen reader can still pick it up, correct? So um, that label is actually implemented with HTML. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so you, so a lot of the contact forms that come straight out of Joomla, they don't they don't code it correctly, and there's nothing you can do. So you actually have to get one that uses HTML correctly that connects the label. Yeah, because if um, putting putting a default in there is not enough. 
it's not picked up by um, a screen reader as what's supposed to be um, input into that form. So you 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 know convert forms convert forms actually does the HTML correctly. So it's not a matter of hiding it with CSS. It actually has to be there physically in the HTML. Okay. Um, let's see here. Somebody asked with Lighthouse in Google Chrome, you can test your website. Mm -hmm. One of the tests is accessibility. How well is that test? Okay. So um, I, I think this was brought up earlier on today about um, using Lighthouse and don't try to get to 100%, but that's more for the speed. Absolutely. You, you can't, the chances of getting 100% percent for speed is never going to happen, but you can very easily get to 100% for um, for your accessibility. And those are just for the, the automated test. That's going to test for things like contrast. It's going to test for spacing. It's going to make sure your all your alt tags are in there. The things it's not going to test for is all the interpretation stuff. Um, is, your, is your content comprehensible? Um, are, are you using good language inside of your link text? All of those kind of things. And that's why accessibility insights kind of is like um, the way to go through the WCAG, you know, requirement by requirement, tells you how to test it, kind of, and then you get to go in and kind of do it manually. But the great part about it, if you're a website developer, over time you can set up good practice and, and you can take care of, you know, I always do it this way and that and, and that kind of works for me, that workflow works for me. And so over time, you're just creating uh, with accessibility in mind. Okay. Um, then there's another, okay, let me look. Yep, this one, let's do this one. Um, this, this, this is sort of prefaced with a comment. So um, this person finds that page sections with text over a background image fail the axe accessibility checker um, is this in general a bad practice or can something like this be done in an accessible way yeah it absolutely can be done it, it just it just you got to meet that um, requirement um, for contrast and so things can be beautiful and you, you just have to make the difference between the image and the words um, distinct enough so that it passes. So don't give up on your creative designs. Create your websites and then just make tweaks so that it ex it passes accessibility and you still have a really beautiful accessible website. Wow. Okay. Um, and I have to make this brief comment about your description. When you read your alt text description, mm -hmm. I have, when I close my eyes, well, I have a redheaded son and he's about, you know, and, and he's a college sophomore now. And when I started my business back in 2008, you know, he was entering, goodness, he was entering kindergarten probably. So yeah, um, it's amazing to see what happened, how life happens around our, our personal lives, around our businesses. Um, in general. So, uh, I mean, that's just, so when you read that description, I'm like, oh, I miss my child because he left the house today. Had to go, you know, do what young people do. Yeah, that's a really good program if you ever want to get involved. Like a big part of accessibility is, and get, is getting involved with the community that uses it. Um, alt text as poetry, there is also a way that you write an alt tag for music for people who can't hear. Oh my goodness. Right? They can read yeah. the music and you don't ever think of those things. Right. Um, I, you know, that creative type poetry alt tag is, is more, um, more utilized on social, social media because they go on to Instagram and they want to experience what all their friends are experiencing. That's a fun platform. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're like, yep, my daughter's rolling her eyes at me. You know, those are the kind of alt tags they want of the image. And I don't know if you know, but you can go on Instagram and you can add alt tags to all your images. I mean, you yeah. may not be able to, but ask your teenagers how to do it. And they'll be doing <laughs> it. But that's what the community is asking for. Give us some fun alt tags once in a while when it makes sense. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's some great discussion on what should be on alt tags um, and you know what shouldn't. 
and the, the discussion of headshots came up. Well, what do I write for someone, you know, someone's headshot on a professional yeah. website? Ask them, <laughs> ask them what you, what they want written for their headshot. I mean, that's the first. And so it just opens your eyes to um, something you don't, you don't even think about because you just look at the image and you can see it. We were, I was grateful at one time, my client, one of my clients was the Florida Alliance for Assistive Services and Technology. And we'd done a series of trainings for them and their executive director was blind from um, birth. And, and it's an interesting, it, it changes your whole presentation when you have to, when you adjust. Beca and this is software training, mind you. So you're teaching somebody how to use something that is by and large a visual tool, um, like a spreadsheet or a word processor. Mm -hmm. And to have to paint that picture, uh, you you really have to, I mean, it was it was a very interesting and and you know, we had a very long relationship with this um, organization. They're a nice bunch of folks and they do some really, they do really good work. They provide for free, they provide the technology if you need a certain device. And so they had a showroom in Tallahassee and it was, it was kind of neat to see all the stuff that they considered assistive, you know, among the assistive technology were ads and things that, you know, things that we use anyways. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I want to thank you again um, for presenting. I'm glad that I've gotten to work off and on with you for uh, Joomla Day USA, because this is all, I mean, I when, when Laura asked me, you know, to help, I was like, yeah, I'm in. So, uh, so and speak speaking of yeah, her, she, and she pops up. <laughs> she, was, she was watching, she was watching. Oh, good. How'd you like it? It was fantastic. Thank you so much. And just so everyone knows, I was there at Rutgers, and I love that we just got a plug. Um, but I love that description. You were so excited. You were so intense, because I was the moderator for that exam, and you were so <laughs> intense. And I'm so happy that you passed with flying colors. So Barely, like an 83 or something. I was only like... <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah, I think first that is time, in, first 80 try. is the eighty is the score. That's the score to pass. Yeah. And, uh, the eighty. I got the eighty. So, oh, this was really fun, and it was so great to monitor all kinds of people today, and to sit into sesh all kinds of sessions. And I still have one left for volunteering that I'm I'm doing before the day is over. But I have to say, I was very nervous to do this, and I'm just so glad you all enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to sit with me for an hour. And if you have any other questions or want to reach out to me later on, please do so. Yeah. And at this, we still have another 12 minutes. So if anybody has anything else to ask Robin um, or Todd, please put, put it in the Q&A. And then our next sessions start in about 30 minutes at 4.15. Yeah. So. And in between, go to the networking space. And I think in the expo hall, Joomla.org still has some folks in there. So if anyone wants to go in there and chat with anybody, you're welcome to go in and, um, and chat away. I think it's so funny. Some people go to the networking, but mostly they go to the expo box and they see who's there and then they jump on the stage and they have a conversation. Because it's less scary because they, they don't know who they're going to get. That's right. Oh, I've, been, I've been going into the networking. It's like dealer's choice. I'm like... <laughs> Wow! Who am I gonna get? That's I've got in. I've got in. And I got a couple of amazing people. But what's funny, more funny, is people come to the expo and they go to the Joomla booth, but they don't come on the stage. So we have to remember as we're chit chatting away, the people are listening. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. But thank you guys. I don't see any other Q and A. So I'm gonna jump off the stage. But you guys are all amazing. And um, so in about 30 minutes, the next set of sessions will start. Yeah. And then after that, we have, so please don't forget, everybody needs to come in um, to listen to Brian, who's going to shut out the day. And then tomorrow we're going to have a J Day USA brunch from nine to 11 Eastern time. So hopefully you guys can come in to Kumo space and maybe we'll play games. I don't know. It's just going to be whoever shows up, shows up and we'll do it from there. More cahoots. Yes, more cahoots. Everyone likes that. So come on in. Someone actually asked me if we were doing a social tonight. I'm like, 
yeah. no, I'm done. <laughs> I think we're done. <laughs> So, I would have loved to have a drink at the bar with you if we were really in person, though. I wish we could next yep. year. And by the way, there'll be an announcement at the closing session about what we're going to do for next year. So don't forget to come in. Don't so forget. Thank you. Thanks again, Robin. All right, I'm going to jump out. But guys, you could still ask questions if you like. I don't see anything in the Q&A pod at the moment. Because we still have, yeah, people are still here. So come on. Yeah. Somebody in this audience. So if anyone wants to request a pop on the stage, you can join us and ask us a question. Oh, that's right. Why not? Don't be afraid. Yeah. Ooh. So has everyone, um, has anyone tried to learn more about accessibility? Oh, Joe's coming up. Yep, Joe's coming up. Good. You got him. Thank yep. you. This was a really, really great presentation. Thank you very, very much. I, uh, it's an eye opener. And uh, I just uh, right out of the gate was thinking, oh, yeah, my alt tags are very boring. <laughs> they, <laughs> you know, that description of uh, the, you know, curly red hair, mouth open, teeth showing, all that versus boy laughing. You know, that, that, that was. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, we don't live in the the world of, of um, somebody with a um, an impediment or or a disadvantage yeah. in an area. Um, I wear two hearing aids, but fortunately for me, they correct my world so that it is easy to um, integrate in it. I I hate to think what my life would have been like if I'd have been born a hundred years earlier. And you know, if we think about people who are, are living today, trying to participate in today's world, who it would be like, you know, the, the person that's profoundly deaf and there are no hearing aids. But mm -hmm. if you have the ability today to make that website accessible for someone who would love to participate, in, in the world at large, uh, we're only doing everybody a favor by, by, by doing that. So this has been fantastic. It's baby um, steps, really. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, uh, you know it's, it, we, all, we all know a little bit of HTML and a little bit of CSS. And if we could get it to work in Joomla, that would be the ideal situation, right? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I love the fact that people from the Joomla community are thinking this way. Oh, absolutely. Right. And, you know, and honestly, I'll be I'd be honest. Uh, I haven't gone in and filled in my browser, you know, uh, title on every menu item uh, on every website. Uh, it's, that's just not thinking about it. it's being lazy. Really, that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what, I have this uh, meetup that I go to in Boston and um, the folks who run it, I I got up the courage to send in my website and say, OK, because I was doing it on my own website. Tell me what you think. And the first thing they said is, why is it in Great British English, Great Britain English? Why? And I'm like, I don't know, because it is an English English. And they're like, no, it's not. So it's like the very first thing. And I got a, you know. A red, a red check mark on that one. Nope, wrong. And I, and I was like, okay, correct that. We won't make that mistake anymore. Now it's built into my workflow. Every time I start a new website project, I set it to English. And these are the things that you end up learning, and you just work it into your workflow. And all of a sudden, you, you're, you know, ninety percent of the way there just by doing it repetitively every time. You're going to get an argument from people from the UK going, well, the only correct English is to be English. I just like, want to hear right? the screen reader that reads in, you know, in that British accent. I mean, we see it all the time. Everyone's got their Siri to set up. I, a, I, I'm not from the UK, but I set my voice to a British accent because I you like it, it right? better, right? I think I'm talking to James Bond or, you know. <laughs> Like I said, it, it only matters when you just have like that boring business website where you need to be professional. But otherwise, you can have as much fun as you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, just, I think I've said this before to some of you. It's like I'm from Florida, so I only speak American. 
Merkin, yeah. right? Merkin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And I always kid people, you know, uh, Americans, I'm from Canada, and Americans say A a lot because they always tell people they're from the USA. A. <laughs> a. Right. So don't blame well, me for saying A. They say it too. But we're yeah, supposed no. to Arthur Fonzarelli. We're supposed to go A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I miss the Fonz. He was very yeah. cool. Yeah. Should have put I, that in our cahoots game. I could have. Oh. <laughs> and here's here's why that's uh, that links back. I was um oh uh, shoot. Program department meeting, Joomla programs department meeting, and um, Patrick was there, and Patrick made a reference to jumping the shark. Now Patrick's from Australia, and a bunch of the team is not from the United States and has not seen Happy Days. Mm -hmm. They don't know the phrase "jumping the shark," what that pop culture reference is, and he explained it. Oh, I'm just sitting there going masterful yeah there you go he, he knew i knew but he knew it cole he knew that right jumping the shark referenced you know so many people made a huge good. huge effort to to get involved in this event people waking up at 5 a.m in the morning to be oh, at yeah. the first session and people staying up late on the other side of the globe so that they could participate that's just been absolutely fantastic. And and I just want to commend uh, both you guys for participating, uh, especially being involved, uh, setting up. I really believe the Joomla Day USA event is a lifesaver for the people of Joomla because it's just been way too long that been we've been able quiet. to get together and meet in person. And I've had a ball just seeing good friends, old friends, and me making some new friends as well too. This has been uh, a terrific platform to do that. And we're learning so, so much. All right. Yeah, speaking of someone who's just waking up, Patrick in the next session. There you um, go. Hearing, I'm his moderator. All and, right. Um, yeah, so he went to bed after sitting in the booth for like, this morning for like five hours and now he's waking up and it's almost morning. I think it was going to be like 4.30 or 5 for oh him in the morning and he's going to do the presentation. So talk about dedication. Good for that, him. Wow. Yeah, that's an effort, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and, and if I could just make the point that uh, he's making a huge effort, we need to make a big effort in accessibility just because it's really it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, this is a great reminder. I'm glad that I met you uh, through this event here uh, because, um, you know what, when you're not around people that know this stuff, you, you don't think about it the way you really need to. And you were really brave sending a group of people your website for <laughs> criticism or for, you know, approval. That takes a lot of guts to do that because we call ourselves professionals right yeah and then we find out well, we yeah. rely what we end up <laughs> we rely on so many other people to make yeah it. yeah yeah absolutely well i'm gonna hop out of here i'm uh, gonna get uh, a quick bite to eat before i jump in on the next session uh and thank you guys for for doing what you do and and i will catch you later thank you todd for being such a great moderator as well Thank you. Thank you. All right. I, I think this is going to turn into a pumpkin in a minute.